Hey everyone, Greg here, founder of WrestlingDivas.Webs.com, dedicated to highlighting the most beautiful and deadly entertainers in professional wrestling. I am so excited to introduce my next special guest. She is professional wrestling's first ever Brazilian star to reach TV. She was a finalist for the 2015 season of WWE Tough Enough and is a former Impact Wrestling superstar. She now enjoys success as one half of the Shine Wrestling Tag Team Champions alongside Santana Garrett. So I'd like to welcome Gabby Castrovinci, a.k.a. former knockout Rec Hell. Hi, Gabby. How are you today? Thanks for, for joining me. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you inviting me to your show. That's amazing. <laughs> it's no problem, and it's my honor. So um, you have a very interesting story in wrestling. Not everybody enters the industry the way that you did. Uh, most people know you from Tough Enough, which uh, – happened about two years ago or so. Um, and the WWE is really a household name, and it always will be. Um, and I know that hearing about any sort of casting call they have, I mean, would be appealing to pretty much anybody. But what was it mm-hmm. about the series and the environment and, you know, the whole <laughs> WWE universe that attracted you to the show? Because not everybody is cut out for the industry, as most of those competitors on that show found out. Right, <laughs> and uh, it actually com- comes to find out that a lot of them found out later on that they're not cut out for, for wrestling. Uh, I, I just found out that some other people got released uh, from WWE not so long ago. But back to your uh, question, uh, it, it's really, really hard. As you mentioned before, I came from a different background. Uh, I started my career with fitness, and... I never thought that wrestling would be so intense and physical because, you know, the taboo is that wrestling is fake, but I have to tell you that it's not. <laughs> it's really, really tough. So you almost didn't make the final cut because of, for lack of a better term, your disposition towards others. And, I mean, some fans saw that as a negative, some as a positive, that you were so upfront. Um, I mean, some people like that, some people don't. It depends on who you're around. Um, but Triple H gave you a second shot at the show. And I'm curious to know what it is that he saw in you, in your opinion. And, um, you know, going back and looking at that footage, is there anything that you would have changed about your approach to the show now that you, you're you in the business, quote-unquote? Absolutely not. Actually, uh, I don't even uh, be fake, you know what I'm saying, because it's all about being uh, – it's all about pretending. It's, you know, you have to put a smile on your face even though uh, you're not happy inside, you know what I mean? And I was brought up in a different way. Uh, I'm very honest, very straightforward. Like I always say, either you like it or not, I don't care. I'm going to tell you how it is. <laughs> but it's so, it seems to be so long ago already. And uh, the conversation that we had, I had a prior conversation with him uh, before they actually taped it. And he said, you know, that he saw a lot of passion in me and he decided to give me a chance since uh, one of the competitors had, a, had some uh, healthy issues and couldn't compete any longer for the spa and and that was it and you know I embraced it and I like I always said in the show I I came here to learn how to wrestle not to swim with alligators and and do like those things I thought we're going to be like full-time in a performance center uh you know learn how to how to you know learn the business pretty much but that didn't happen (laughs) So there were a lot of different coaches and guest stars on the show that, you know, showed everybody the ropes. Uh, The main coaches were Billy Gunn, Booker T, and Lita, Uh, three very celebrated but very different people in the industry. And they all had their own different styles. I mean, Billy Gunn was very upfront and honest like you and and didn't play any games. And Booker T was very serious about calisthenics and and things like that in the ring. Um, Were there any... uh, any of the trainers that you particularly clicked with? And if so, is there any particular advice that they gave you that really sticks with you to this day? Um, to be honest with you, like I said before, we didn't have much ingrain time up to the fourth week I was there. It was just a few uh, hours for tapings and that was it. 
so it's hard for me to say what I know about them from Tough Enough. Uh, I know that Booker T, when I got eliminated, he, I, I had a conversation with him over the phone, and he said, I do believe you. I know you're going to make it. Uh, I have. I never had a contact with Lita. Uh, I never. I never really dealt with her in, in the business, and I do see uh, Billy again quite often. He also lives here in Orlando. Uh, he. I see that sometimes he goes to the school that I go to, and he teaches some, you know, some training, but I never had the pleasure to come across. Yeah, uh, and I love to because you know he's he's really good and he has a, he's a great wrestler. Has great charisma and and character. That's that's good. So I um, watched the series back, and uh, you know, mm-hmm. I I was at the time surprised that you know some people got eliminated as early as they did, and and you were one of those people. So when you heard mm-hmm. the name, uh, your name being called for the elimination, it's not a question of so much me being curious as whether or not that was justified, but what was going through your head? Because I thought you were going to make it a lot further along with some other people. Oh, yeah, so, so do I. And um, it comes down to it because not everything is shown on TV. You know, and to be honest, like, uh, reality TV is fake. You know what I'm saying? So we have mm-hmm. to stage a bunch of things, and uh, they only show what they want, and they, we only do as, as they tell us to, uh, us to do. Uh, I had situation, uh, a situation in the house where I, in, in a spare of the moment, I told one of the contestants that was pissing me off, I said, listen, I'm going to fucking stab you. <laughs> so <laughs> here in America, I'm from Brazil, and this is so freaking normal to say things like that. Not, we're not, not meaning, but it's just saying, like, fuck you, you know what I mean? Uh, I told this person, and immediately they put me aside and said, here in America, this is a threat, and we're going to uh, terminate you. And so, you know, uh, that's a shame. I understand where you're coming from. And at that point, my husband was riding Orlando, and I said, you know, should I just call my husband to pick me up then? And they said, well, give us a moment, whatever. So they came back to my room and said, well, uh, we're going to let this pass but you're probably going to go home on Tuesday because of this. It's like, well, okay, no problem. You know, just embarrass me on live TV or national TV. It's okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I thought I was going to do a lot fur- further than that, but that was probably because of my behavior uh, towards uh, this other contestant. So going from Brazil to, you know, the WWE or to Brazil and into the live international television, I mean, was it a bit of a culture shock to you? What was hard about the adjustment or not so? Oh, not at all. I've been in America for 14 years right now. I, I've been, I'm a citizen uh, for 10 years now. So I've been in America for a, a, a little while and, but I never been exposed to TV. I never had to live with, with different people like that. You know what I'm saying? I li- I lived with my father when I came to America, and then I got married and I lived with my husband. But I never had to share my privacy with twelve other people. No, eleven actually, right? <laughs> Plus the camera people and production and stuff like that. So it it was different, yeah, for sure. So you were picked up by uh, TNA Impact and or Impact Wrestling, as it's now known, shortly afterwards. And uh, I I think that um, going from WWE and TNA can be a, a somewhat difficult transition for some just because of the different styles. And you have more people from the indie scene on TNA, arguably. Um, and it, it's just a different style. It's a different product. They have, you know, different limitations with budgeting and in different styles. So was that adjustment uh, difficult for you? Because one of the things that I always hear in the WWE is that they don't necessarily take into consideration how much experience you have, but how receptive you are to their coaching. Whereas in TNA, you have to like come in with your own style. almost. No, that's not so true. Like, um, okay. So I've got picked up by TNA Immediately after my elimination, it was so funny. Uh, I had a conversation with them over the phone, and obviously, I had to I had a I had to wait for my uh, my release to come from WWE. 
And, and they actually screwed that up because then the contract had said that we had pretty much one year that we couldn't do anything televised. So I waited for the show to be over, and I reached out to uh, WWE, and I requested my uh, – my release because at that point I didn't want to get hired by them. I, you know, just because I would prefer to do my own developmental. Uh, Cause uh, as you know, I do have my own business. So I couldn't dedicate like a full time to a wrestling, like, like WWE offers. So mm-hmm. when I talked to TNA soon after my elimination, I was like, yeah, you know, sounds good. You, the schedule is very reasonable. Meanwhile, until uh, I can work for you guys, uh, I'm just going to uh, obviously learn how to wrestle. So I, I had signed up for my uh, for my wrestling school already, and I just kept training, training. Uh, is that, uh, what, TNA only tapes up to, let's say, September, and then they stop until the following year. So at that point, uh, I was going to miss the next set of tapings, and we agreed that I was going to start in January. Meanwhile, obviously, I had to learn how to wrestle, improve a bunch of things, uh, promo skills and stuff like that. But, no, TNA is very humble, down to earth. People are very amazing in there. They actually help one another. They help me tons. I cannot even tell you who I liked more in the locker room because the, the girls' locker room was very, very good after a while. Uh, some people laughed. And some people stayed, and it was so peaceful and amazing. I can't tell much about WWE because I didn't experience that. So as far as the knockouts division, I mean, you got to work with some amazing people. I mean, Madison Rain is, is one yeah. of my personal favorites. Jade is fantastic. Uh, they have Rosemary yeah. there now, and, and she's very well-versed and has been around for a long time. Um, so mm-hmm. was there anyone in particular that you enjoyed working with? And if so, um, what is it about their chemistry that clicked with you? Or what did you learn from them? Oh, I mean, oh, actually, a uh, huge shout-out to Jade. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday. Uh, I enjoy working with everybody. I worked uh, with, I think, almost everybody in the locker room. I mean, in a knockout division. But, uh, Gail, I never had a chance to really worked with her. I had one match that she was involved, but I don't think we ever touched anything. Uh, I had one of my best matches was with Madison, uh, Madison Ray and Jade. Uh, I had a match with Marty, Marty Bell as well when she was there. I mean, it was a great experience. I mean, it was really, really good. I can't, seriously, I can't pinpoint what was the best. Everybody there was really good. So as you're progressing and in, in learning these different styles of uh, wrestling and the psychology of it, I mean, as far as becoming a performer and, and wrestling in the ring, what do you try to emphasize or look for as you're training? Because a lot of people think that this is a sports contest when in reality it's really just um, a physical uh, performance rather than, you know, a, a legitimate contest. So, Psychology can be hard to grasp for a lot of people. Right, absolutely. And, you know, to be honest with you, anybody can learn how to do a move, how to receive a move, but it's not all about that. As I'm learning and, you know, moving forward with wrestling, I believe the most important thing is you have to have a character. Otherwise, you're just a wrestler. You know, you have the fans just expecting to see the next move, not being surprised by, you know, your personality. So, I, and this is the hardest part. I'm a very, very shy person. <laughs> it's it's hard to say that. People are like, oh, no, you're not shy. Yes, you know. When it comes to things like that, uh, I'm not as natural as people would think because, you know, I, I I was a model. I know how to take photos. So I'm, I don't know how to act in front of a camera. So I think, obviously, psychology is very important where and when to do what the character is is like the most important, I believe. So I know that um, it wasn't so much exposed on television, but I know that towards the end of your first run with Impact, you did start to work as a heel. You you kind of just were this narcissistic selfie queen, um, for lack of a better term. Um, Mm -hmm. So as far as switching gears from a face to a heel, is that difficult for you, or, or what do you 
what you look for in, in the heel that yeah. you don't look for in the face because you can't do all these fancy moves because it just have make the crowd right. And the that's why I debate so much. It's a heel. I love the fancy moves, the flashy moves, whatever. But I'm such a good heel. You know, it's so easy to be a heel and bitch at people because even though when I'm a baby face, I tend to curse at my opponent. It was like, shit, oh, my God, I should not have done that. <laughs> but I can work either way right now. Uh, I worked, I think, many times as a baby face and a lot of times as a, as a heel. I can do anything right now. It just comes easier, obviously, to be a heel. So as far as you're really the first uh, Brazilian female, are in our industry, especially to reach on national television. A lot of people take that as having um, a very powerful influence on on the industry. So how do you carry that weight? Because it's not easy to deal with uh, that type of title when you're uh, in an industry that can be, I I mean, I'm going to be honest to say it, it can be a very judgmental industry for fans that are always constantly making mistakes that you make in the ranks or whatever the case is. I lost you for a bit. I couldn't understand the last few seconds. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's no problem. Um, I, so I'm it's just asking how how y- you being the first Brazilian star in our industry, how you carry that mm-hmm. weight, because a lot of fans can see that as a very influential uh, title to hold right. in our industry. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, honestly, uh, sometimes I feel like I'm under a microscope because People say, oh, you're not the first Brazilian. How about this and this guy? I was like, well, I am the first female from Brazil that claimed the fame. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, we haven't seen any other Brazilians on TV, right? Uh, I know mm-hmm. WWE hired someone, uh, and then I also saw someone wearing Brazilian gear in Japan. Now, I don't know if she's Brazilian or not. I don't remember her name. And I, I love for wrestling to expand more in Brazil. Uh, I just think, like, in my country, because of the lack of cable, because it's so much money, a lot of people didn't have access. And I actually just talked about this in an interview that I had with Christian Rosenberg at After Buzz, that now with Hulu and the WWE Network, people can get more, um, get to see more about wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, yeah, it's a huge responsibility. I want to do it right. Uh, obviously, I'm not where I want it to be as far as wrestling. I know I can improve. I know I can be much better than this. Uh, but if nothing happens overnight. It, has been, it hasn't even been two years yet that I started wrestling. Uh, and confidence and, you know, comes with practice. The more I practice, the better I'll get. So it's just a matter of time now. <laughs> so speaking of confidence, and you said earlier that you were nervous about different things, especially performing in front of a camera. I mean, you've done a lot of modeling prior to your wrestling career, but not necessarily on camera work. I mean, as far as uh, dealing with the fame and dealing with how the fans react to you, is it is it tough for you? Because some people that I've spoken to you have had a tough time about dealing with the negativity of it all. I mean, it, like they say, be careful what you wish for. And I, I'm sure you seem like a very confident and upfront person, but is it a struggle for you at all at times? Oh, no, not at all, because uh, I'm a very positive person. So let's say if you're going to look, you know, and filter everything these people talk, all the crap they talk, oh, my God, nobody would live. You can imagine Kim Kardashian, anybody that has fame, let's say the Bellas, you know, we always get trashed. But I don't focus on that. You know, I use the positive comments and stuff like that to motivate me. You know, I don't, I don't care about if people, I don't care about the negative opinions at all. I don't even look at them to be honest with you. So as far as uh, your future in just the entertainment world or just as a public figure, I mean, you said that you didn't want to commit to the WWE at the time because it's a real full-time schedule. I mean, they're on the road 23 days a year. I don't right. know how they do it, to be perfectly honest. So, you know, at its peak and in your ideal mind, what is it that you would like to become known? Because obviously, 
you know, being a full-time professional wrestler doesn't interest you. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is, what is it that you'd like to become? Well, obviously, I want to succeed on, on professional wrestling. I want to succeed in my clothing uh, line. I, you know, there's other things that I wanted to achieve before, let's say, an opportunity with WWE. I just look like other people that went to WWE, like AJ Styles. He had a lot of a lot of road before he got hired by WWE, and I wanted to be in a more successful level in the um, in wrestling. <laughs> To you know, to have an opportunity with them, I just I don't think I could go and and spend uh, a lot of time in a performance center because I I believe the pay is not as good and like I said I have my businesses and a lot of responsibility that I have to take care of it financially, so I couldn't afford to do that at the moment. So I know that you have a clothing line that's growing. I don't know a lot about its message, so I think that this would be a good platform to kind of explain what uh, your clothing line is all about. Does it have a particular message or hook that you hope that uh, people will gravitate to? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, no, I started my clothing line, I think uh, it was the end of 2013. I was just like, uh, I was very into fitness, uh, and I couldn't, find Brazilian fitwear in America. I was like, oh, my God, you know, I can do this. <laughs> so I flew to Brazil. Uh, I found someone that could make my clothes, and and uh, she did everything that I envisioned. She was able to translate into the fabric, and I just got my first uh, shipment, and I took a bunch of photos, worked on my website, and I launched, and has been a huge success since. I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm also involved with other businesses. We uh, just started uh, our own energy drink. The name is Java Kick. Uh, and we got, it's going to be launched on a Kickstarter program uh, sometime soon. So if uh, our fans can just um, stay tuned on my social media, I will post uh, some things in the future. Uh, you can also, in this program, people can win, uh, like, a workout with me, a meet and greet. Um, there's tons of things that we're going to put out there. So you get some traffic to our new website for the energy drink. Oh, that sounds fantastic. And uh, I'll be sure to post a link to that so that fans can check all of that out. Um, but you can arguably say that this is one of the most thriving times for women in all sports, not just wrestling, not just professional sports that you see on the field, baseball or basketball. Um, but there really is a women's revolution, no matter where right. you look. And as far as that's concerned, I mean, a lot of women have the approach of performing just like a guy, whereas other people don't know, I still want women in sports to be special because they can offer something that guys can't. So how how do you approach this whole women's revolution in sports uh, in terms it's, of it's amazing. being it, feminine it's about, versus, you know. I'm, yeah, sorry, no, go it's ahead. A, it's, it's, it's amazing. and It's about time that women can have the same uh, time as the man because, you know, um, wrestling has been so focused only on guys. And WWE had selected a handful of great athletes and, I mean, and trained them and hired them or rehired people that has tremendous uh, talent. And me as an indie wrestler, I get to see girls wrestling, and I'm like, holy crap, those girls are amazing. You know, there's so much talent in, in the women's division that it's incredible. And I want this to obviously get more exposure. It's good for all of us. So as far as being a performer, um, how do you kind of find the fine line between showing your femininity while being a serious athlete? I mean, it, 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 to be honest with you, it's tough, you know? <laughs> I mean, you have to be aware, like, of your looks, of your hair, your makeup, you know, your body. Uh, it, it's so hard, like, you know, and there's some critique sometimes that uh, we see online, oh, you look like a dude, you know what? And I said, you wish. 
as a guy that you could have a fit body like mine. You know what I mean? It, it, it's mm-hmm. it's just tough. But like I said, I mean, you have to ignore those things. But uh, rule number one to me is always look good. Your gear has to be on point, hair, makeup, lashes, nails, everything. You have to be a full package. So before we wrap up and let fans know how they can get in contact with you, um, if you could mm-hmm. sum up your experience as a pro wrestler using just one word, what would it be? Just one word. I would say it's very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting well, part of I- <laughs> well, I know you're very active on social media. I mean, your Instagram has like 500,000 followers or some ridiculously high number like that, uh, as well uh-huh. as your clothing yeah. line has its own uh, website and things like that. Uh, so how can fans get in touch with you if they uh, want want to like book you for something or how can promoters get in touch with you for business inquiries? Okay, sure. Uh, on my website, I have a personal website, which is Gabby uh, GabbyCastroVingTreat.com. You can find uh, tons of things in there, how to book me. Uh, my social media, Instagram is uh, Gabby GabbyCastroVingTreat. Uh, my Twitter, I just changed the handle. It's Gabriella Rio, R-I-O, Rio, not like, like Del Rio, they said. <laughs> so that's the new uh, handle. Uh, my clothing line is Gabby uh, dot fitwear, and the same as the website GabbyFitwear.com. dot uh, com, and that's pretty much it. You know, for bookings, you can always send me a private message on Twitter. I'm very active, and I try to respond to everybody. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity for being here on your podcast. It's 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 great. Thank you so much. Oh, no, I really appreciate it, and I think you have a very bright future. So I really appreciate your time, and I'm so thankful for it. So this has definitely been a highlight for me. Yeah, we've been trying to get this um, for like one month now, right? We've been trying to schedule it, and I can do it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good things come to those who wait. But, you know, yeah. No, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. To everyone else for tuning in, be sure to check out wrestlingdivas.webs.com. That's www.wrestling-divas.webs.com. W-E-B-S. For more exclusive content and interviews, and be sure to follow the site on Twitter at Wrestling Divas, again with the Z at the end, for all the latest updates.